now. My name is Oduwale Alainka. Um, I work in the youth department of the Synagogue Church of All Nations. I'm one of the beneficiaries of the scholarship schemes here at the Synagogue Church of All Nations. I was here the last time with Sunny Emmanuel to thank God for the glory of God in my life through our Father in the Lord, Senior Prophet C.B. Joshua. I finished secondary school at the age of 15 and immediately I gained admission into the University of Lagos to study electrical electronics engineering. So the man of God kept me as a youth supervisor. He would come into our midst to counsel us, tell us about his life history, the challenges he faced, encouraged us that we can be the best, that whatever happens, God is still saying something. So this motivated and inspired me to be the best because if he could succeed with his life, that means there's no excuse for failure and I have no excuse for remaining as I am. So I felt challenged to be the best. Even Emmanuel Sani, the best under 17 um, player in the world, used to work. We are all cosmics. We work in the house of God. So while I was in University of Lagos, I had challenges. So while I was in final year, the man of God called me and specifically told me he wanted me to finish with a first class result. So the ministry is going to take a case up, best university in the world. So now we'll continue the master until the Lord say enough. the best university all over the world, we want to send him to go and study his masters. I graduated in, from the University of Lagos with a first class degree in electrical stroke electronics engineering. <laughs> the man of God promised to send me to the United Kingdom for masters. So I'm here to testify to the glory of God because the man of God has indeed kept his promise. So I applied to, three, to four schools in the United Kingdom. So I got offers from three good universities in the United Kingdom. These are the University of Southampton, the University of Edinburgh, and the University of Surrey. The offer letters are here. I got an unconditional offer from three universities in the United Kingdom, the University of Edinburgh, the University of Southampton, and the University of Surrey. So I chose the best out of the three, which is the University of Southampton. <laughs> Immediately, the man of God paid the tuition fees for the University of Southampton, which is 13,900 pounds. Here is the receipt. and I set my mind to commence studies in September. But unfortunately, the man of God kept reminding me of the fact that God wanted the best for me. So I was wondering what he meant by the best because I had a place in one of the good schools in United Kingdom, which is the University of Southampton. Prior to the commencement of my studies in September, I was shocked when I received an offer from one of the best top schools in United Kingdom, which is University College London. Here is the offer letter. This is the unconditional offer of acceptance from University College London, which is a much better school than University of Southampton. Immediately, the man of God withdrew the money from University of Southampton and told me we were going for the best. So I was surprised. He added more money to the money from University of Southampton and immediately paid for the tuition fees in University College London. Here is the receipt. And the amount is £18,245. I then remembered one of the quotes of the man of God, which says, Some situations which seem ordinary may have extraordinary effects, most of which are hidden to the ordinary eye. 
I felt I had the best, but the man of God kept reminding me of a fact that God was preparing me for more than the University of Southampton, which is University College London. I am grateful and I am here to thank God. And I promise to give my best. And I promise to come out with a brilliant result. I will be flying to the United Kingdom tomorrow to commence my studies in University College London. <laughs> the man of God did not stop here. He's also paying for my fee, for my traveling, for my expenses, all expense paid, which adds up to 35,000 pounds, which is around $60,000, 9 million naira, all expense paid. What are you going to study? Tell us the course. I'll be studying MSc Technologies for Broadband Communications in University College London. Glory be to God. <laughs> Those who are in a scholarship scheme, it's a challenge to them. When I was addressing some of them last week, I told them, once you are given a scholarship here, we expect you to come out with first class. We believe that there are a big challenges in the world today. You must be best. Be at the center of your own world. So I'm here to thank the people of God, to all of me thank the man of God, because this could not have been possible except without God. With man, it seemed impossible, but with God, it was possible. Save Johnny. He's given this testimony so that our colleague could feature challenge. Thank you. This is just the, what we are born for and what we are to live for and what we are to die for. You begin to succeed or have peace and comfort of God when the pain and trouble of others begin to matter to you. Hello everyone, this is Inka. I'm at Musala Mohammed Airport. I'm about getting on the plane through gate E64, flight BA73. So um, I would just like you to continue on this trip with me to the United Kingdom. Thank you. Inka moves to her departure terminal at the Murtala Mohammed International Airport, where she will catch her six and a half hour flight non-stop to the United Kingdom. Arriving in the UK's Heathrow Airport at the new Terminal 5 zone, Yinka collects her suitcase from the conveyor belt. <music> Having found the rest of her luggage, she puts them on a trolley and moves out into the International Arrivals Zone. Here comes Yinka, escorted by one of the evangelists of the Synagogue Church of All Nations. She is gladly met by other members of the team, and after a warm welcome, they move on. Now, coming out into the airport's car park, the team loads the luggage into the waiting car, and Yinka hops inside with a gleeful smile. After a good rest, Yinka needs to get ready for university, and the team take her through the high streets of London to get the necessary items she will require during her studies. With the season now approaching winter, the first stop is to get her wrapped up warmly in suitable clothing for the impending cold. She'll need a good hat, a thick coat, and some cosy jumpers. Don't know which one to pick? Then try them all on for size. The next thing is to get some smart, yet functional footwear to hold her in good stead at university as she goes back and forth. 
The greatest essential for any student, of course, is stationery. So Yinka loads up with pens, pencils, paper, and every other gadget she will need throughout her course. As anyone who has been away from home would know, nothing warms the heart like a good call. And quite apart, it is a useful device in itself. The next item on the list is a mobile phone. With a wide range to choose from, she is spoilt for choice. Finally, she decides on this one. After paying at the till, the team decides to head back home to prepare for Yinka's first day at UCL. As an independent student, Yinka will need to learn the intricate London public transportation system to get herself around in good time. The team explains the underground system to Yinka and shows her the route to get to her university. Boarding the train, Yinka is on her way to the first stop on her journey to school. This is Charing Cross Overground Station, the central connection for Yinka's journey, either by bus, by train, or by underground. Using one of the self-service machines, Yinka selects and pays for her underground ticket that will take her both to and from university. Ticket in hand, they head to the underground station of Charing Cross. Travelling down several escalators, Yinka reaches the train level and moves forward to check the route guide. She will take three stops north from here to get to one of the two closest underground stations to UCL. It is still very early in the morning and it is a lot to take in at first glance, but Yinka smiles. She'll feel right at home in no time. They arrive at Russell Square Station and start to climb back up to the ground level. Coming out of Russell Square Station, Yinka will walk through the station gardens before she joins the street leading to UCL. Golden leaves fallen by the late autumn breeze decorate the serene Russell Square Garden as the team walk through. They take a breather and have a seat on the park bench. <laughs> 